I met Jay and Neil, who run No Sweat, a couple of years ago when they were organising benefits. And it's really uh, inspiring and fantastic what they're doing. And it is really great that you've all come out to support it because they take the money directly to the people who need it and they help facilitate people and empower people. And it's fucking wonderful. So if you could welcome on stage uh, Jay from No Sweat with all of the love and support that you've got. Uh, fantastic with Jay from No Sweat. <laughs> You hear me? Yeah. There's a hell of a lot of people there. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I can't see anyone. Right, um, my name is Jay, I'm with No Sweat, as you just heard. Uh, I've been sort of kicked out here, kicking and screaming to say a few words about No Sweat. I've got them all written down the back of a Primark receipt, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, primarily I want to say a big thank you for everyone coming here. We've been doing benefit gigs like this in little pubs around London for many years. And we've finally taken a plunge and moved into a theatre and gone all professional. Which for a bunch of amateur volunteers is quite an achievement. So, you know, it's quite nice to see you all here. I mean, you, you jumped ahead of me. I was there too, to give yourselves a big round of applause. Because uh, thanks to you guys being here, we've sold, this, sold out this theatre, which is amazing. There's over 500 people here. And through your efforts of just buying a ticket and coming along to enjoy some comedians, to raise five thousand pounds so give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> now um, a lot of that money or all that money is going to be distributed through different workers rights organizations around the world from uh, haiti to bangladesh and to thailand in particular which is sort of close to my heart because i've been spent the last seven months in thailand working with a, a small thai ngo who worked with migrant workers out there um, and the situation in Thailand is a lot of the garment industry, a lot of the sweatshops are staffed by migrant workers. So the people who work in there are migrant workers who cross the border from Burma next door. And you're probably all aware of the situation with like Aung San Suu Kyi just been released. It's a big dictatorship. A lot of people are fleeing there as refugees. A lot of people are simply leaving because they can't earn a living. They just literally, they're struggling to survive. So they often send off a family member across the border hoping to earn a better wage. So these people are very vulnerable people and they end up being victims of bro uh, brokers, brokers, people who basically get paid to transport them through checkpoint, army checkpoints to get them to the border. They end up in a rubber ring being floated across a river and then they get to Thailand and then they end up working in some factory trying to work out how to sew and earning a pittance of pay, working over 12 hours a day, getting no overtime pay, the conditions are usually awful. Every story you've ever heard about sweatshops comes true for these people on a daily basis, and they just kind of have to get on with it because they're working for their families back home, they're trying to earn money to survive in Thailand and send as much as they can back home. Um, the average wage of someone in Thailand uh, is 100 baht a day for a 12 hour day. And to put that in perspective, if I go to the off license of 7 Eleven out there and buy two bottles of beer for 90 baht. So someone who works 12 hours a day gets to buy two beers or feed their family and stuff like that. So it's, it, for anyone who sort of says, oh, people earn that money, but they can, you know, two pounds out in Thailand is nothing. It's, it, is, it's, it's, it is nothing, literally. It's nothing. And they should be getting more. And more importantly, there are laws in Thailand in place that they should get more. They have uh, legal minimum wages and they have sort of labor condition laws, but all these laws are ignored, they're not enforced. The companies get away with employing people because they're vulnerable, they treat them like crap, and no one does anything about it. But there are these small organisations um, building solidarity amongst the workers and you know, small NGO groups like the MAP Foundation I've been working with and you know, many others who have been trying to develop the, develop the solidarity of these people. Um, I'm going to round this up because I know that people are waiting to come on stage. But Essentially, I want to give you a positive story because you hear a lot of stories about you know, terrible conditions and stuff like that. I was taken to meet a bunch of these workers, and they're all about 18 and 19, sort of young kids who have travelled across the border, gone through all this situation. Um, and they've met in this temple, and I asked them why they're meeting here, and they said, oh, the police can't get us here. And I was like, what? And they suffer harassment from the police who bribe them if they haven't got their paperwork to hand, like saying they're a documented worker, or if they're not an, un if they're an undocumented worker, they'll end up just being arrested and deported. So they're constant fear of the police. And so they meet in this temple, and they're there to share skills about their situation at work and try and work out how they can resist the 
the exploitation they're suffering. And so with, with the work of small NGOs, they've built themselves. And they've formed themselves into a movement. And there's an organisation called the Workers' Solidarity Association, which is run by migrant workers themselves who work in these factories. And they're slowly standing up for their rights, and it's a spreading movement. Last night, there's now 200 people in the WSA alone, and there's several other groups in Thailand. And they asked me sort of where I come from, what I'm doing, and you know, explained London, no sweat, and what we do. And they were really excited and really passionate about the whole thing, that people far away are caring about what they do, and they're trying to, trying to do something about it, trying to change their lives while they're trying to change their own lives. So what this whole gig represents is one small step in one giant sort of leap of international solidarity. So you should really be proud of yourselves for being here. It's an amazing achievement. And for that, I would like to do the hard sell now and say there's a guy outside with a bucket collecting money. If you've got any change, stick it in there. There's also a guy taking standing orders if anyone wants to donate money. But aside from the money issue, if anyone's interested in getting more involved and volunteering with No Sweat, pick up a leaflet, send us an email, speak to us after the show, because you can do a hell of a lot to improve people's lives, like these guys who meet in the temple in Chiang Mai. Just get involved and build a movement. I'm going to sod off now and leave you all to it. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah? <laughs>